Hey, what's up guys? I'm here with Know It All Justin, and today we're not only reviewing some of the best value bundle sticks that are out there on the market today, we are reviewing this massive beast, like refrigerator cooler. This is the new air flip shelf refrigerator for your wine and your beer and your soda that you're gonna pair with your cigars. We're talking about these bundle sticks, pairing with some of the best drinks, all next on the Zeal Cigar Review. Well, JB, it's been a minute. We, 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 we've, been, been. we've been MIA for a little bit. We've been yeah. MIA for a little bit. I feel bad. I feel bad. We've been, we've both been super busy. Yeah. Yeah. You're, sure. you're, what you don't know about Justin is he actually has another full-time job prior to working here full-time. Uh, he works at Apple. So you, so you guys have been busy, huh? Uh, yeah. We just opened back up. Okay. Like, uh, actually allowing people into the store again. Okay. And uh, okay. it's, it's been very busy. A lot of a lot of my colleagues still work from home. Okay. So okay. we're a little short, but it's been it's been a ride, man. It's yeah, yeah, ride. yeah. So if you have any questions uh, on your Apple products, <laughs> go ahead and drop them in the comments below. <laughs> All that said, Justin and I want to tell you a little bit about this new air flip shelf. This thing is a ginormous beast. And we got some uh, beer pairing and wine pairings in there Ooh. that we can't wait to get with these cigars. And today we are smoking two budget cigars that previously have gone unsmoked on our reviews. And I'm smoking the Fratello Rosso. This is their uh, Rosado bundle stick. I've never heard of a Rosado bundle stick before. Me either. I really haven't. And you're smoking the? The Fratello Blue, which is the Blue. Maduro. Oh, okay. Of the okay. I've never had this one, so I'm excited. Now, you guys know if you probably saw me previously on here, when, before JB ever got here, I did the Fratello Verde, which is their green label. Mm. It was a phenomenal Connecticut. I couldn't believe how good it was. And these cigars just got rated like 89 by Blind Man's Puff. They did. Okay, which is huge for a bundle stick. It's like 325, dude. Yeah. Retail, Three, 325. And an 89, almost I in the 90s, man. Can you believe that, dude? It's incredible. So we're going to smoke them tell you what we think, but we got to show you this new air flip shelf behind us. So watch B roll. B roll. Go. Now, what kind of uh, cigar smoker gets just a refrigerator? Is it somebody who drinks a lot? Is it somebody who drinks a lot of soda, a lot of beer, a lot of wine, maybe all the above? Do you do that? That's a good question. Yeah, yeah. What kind of, um, what kind of, what kind of cigar smoker is this, this uh, refrigerator for? Honestly, 
It's for everybody, even if you don't smoke cigars. Right? Are you kidding me? Look at all this. Yeah, dude. I've got a lot in there. Wine, oh. bottles, oh. 152 cans, like oh 64 gosh. bottles. Dude, it's incredible. Uh, it's got a nice, yeah. it's got a nice compressor on the back of it too that you probably saw on the B-roll. It is top notch. If you know anything about New Air, their products are top notch. It is beautiful. You can adjust the cooling all the way down to 40, I believe. Uh, 30 something. 30 I something. Okay, 30 something. Yeah, I believe. 35, I think. And you can keep it at like 50 if you want so we're gonna have it at 40 but jb is gonna be picking the drinks that we're going to pair today because Ooh. he is an official drink sommelier i wish I a sommelier. Say, you're a mixologist i'm a I'm that's a like snob. the hipster version I'm a that's snob. the hipster version of sommelier <laughs> a hipster that's the hipster version <laughs> a mixologist today what we're gonna do on the show is uh cut light and smoke these cigars Ooh. but before we ever get into that we're gonna tell you the topic we're talking about which is pretty deep so get ready to go down the rabbit hole with us as we talk about the top five men that have impacted our lives Ooh. Before we do that, we gotta cut, light, and smoke. smoke. Get us some beers. So I'm gonna do this because I've talked about this with a lot of my other pairings. Uh, the Flor de la Antilles Maduro is one of my favorite pairings with this. And that is I'm not be... a fan of this. Just so everybody understands out there, I'm not a fan of this. Justin knows I make fun of him for being a priss every time <laughs> he drinks this. It's Pabst Blue Ribbon, the original blue collar beer, and they Hard made it coffee. coffee for the hipster blue collar guys out there, okay? So I'm not a fan of it. I will tell you this much. It's delicious. It is very it good. It is really good. It's stupid good. <laughs> it really is. So you what though, are you going to pick for me for this uh, risotto, man? i tell you what. i tell you what. Risotto. I've been smoking this all week. Uh, I really do like it. It's got some nuts, some leather, some creaminess in it, uh, a little bit of baker spice. So you tell me. Ooh. Ooh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? He might, he might pick something I don't even know about yet. I don't even know. Let's see. Let's see. Is he going to pair right? Is he going to strike out? What's going to happen right now? He could barely get the door open because I'm right in front of it. You know what? I'm going to go weird on you, man. Get weird with it? Yeah. So this Time is, to get weird with we it. we got a lot of local breweries in there. There's a ton in Arizona, oh, and I'm okay. a huge fan of a lot of them. This is from a local brewery called Goldwater Brewing in Scottsdale. Ooh. They are, uh, this is their uh, okay. prickly pear cactus kolsch. Pick prickly pear? Look at this. Oh, it even kind of matches. Oh, come on. It even kind of matches a little bit. Look at that. Well, you know, it's, it's kind of Fresh Crack Friday. We're going to call it Thursday, Thursday, Thursday today. We're going to drop another video tomorrow that won't be Fresh Crack Friday. So our Fresh Crack Friday starts today. We're calling it Thursday, Thursday. So you cracked yours. I'm going to crack mine. Oh. All right. First thing we got to do is sip it. Okay. Ooh, ooh it smells good. <laughs> Dude, that's delicious. <laughs> This is delicious. I've been I've Desert been, uh, Rose. All right. I've been hey. milking those. All right. Hey, 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 Desert Rose. I hear you. I hear you. This is good. This is good. Not too hoppy. In fact, a lot of the, uh, you know, the small batch type stuff for the beers are really hoppy. This is perfect. This yeah. is really good. I'm not a huge hoppy fan. I'm not a big, like, double, triple IPA drinker. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that one I really enjoyed a lot. I tried it and I was like, uh, I need six of those. Oh yeah, dude. And I've been it's milking them ever since. Mm. But how does it go with the Rosada? I know, I'm looking forward to trying that. I, this, That's gonna be a big thing. This is gonna go so good with this Maduro, I already know it. Yeah? Yeah, man. It's well, so, it's sweet, it's got some coffee in it. It's got the alcohol as well. That is I, the closest that I come to putting cream in any coffee that I drink. Listen, if you put cream in your coffee, we can hang, all right? Justin won't be around, but we can hang. <laughs> when it comes to being a man, when it comes to being uh, raising as men, you guys know, you know that I'm involved in a, a men's ministry at our church. Yeah. And, uh, you know, mentoring and, you know, essentially um, being raised as a man, it takes a village. You know, uh, dads can do it alone, but it's always better to do it with, with friends and with other people. So we want to talk to you about the top five men that have impacted our life. I have a top five list. I actually sent it to Justin yesterday. I asked him for a top five list. I have not seen his list till right now. So you're, I'm going to defer to you. You go first. Who's Ooh. the, who's the uh, no, starting at number five, the very bottom of walk, work up to the, the most important. Who's number five? I didn't rank them that way. You didn't rank them? That's fine. Just say whoever it is. I didn't whoever rank them that way. Okay. Um, you know that's that's really interesting. Uh, one of one of mine is uh, his name is Keith Roberts. Okay. Um, I wish I knew where he was coaching. Why, at now. why is he important to you? So Keith Roberts was probably 
uh, he, he was the first person that uh, recruited me from a college for a track. Okay. He was the first guy that said, like, I want you. I want you at my school. I want you to come visit. Let's do this. Let's do it now. All right. And the dude wasn't playing. And okay. And he, uh, he was a legit athlete back in the day. I remember uh, watching him when I was a kid. Uh, he ran in the area. He was a, a hurdler. Um, the dude was the real deal, man. He talked the talk, he walked the walk, and mm. he backed it all up. So mm. Mm. Um, that was the kind of dude that would actually do certain workouts with us so that he would know which parts of our body was affected the most. Okay. So that he could then uh, also do a recovery regimen that uh, that worked with that. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. So, As a former coach, I yeah. know it's important to relate to your um, students, relate to your team players, yeah. stuff like that, which is huge. And, and that was at a time in my life when a lot of people were telling me that, uh, and, and I'm going to be honest, I, I have not experienced a lot of personal racism in my life, but mm -hmm. as I was being told by a lot of people who were in my circle and in my family that as a white boy, I couldn't run track. Okay. Couldn't be okay. a sprinter. Okay. Couldn't yeah. be a sprinter. Yeah. Keith, Keith Roberts was the first man that said he didn't give a shit. Okay. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. And I ran with uh, a four by one team that went to nationals. Yeah, dude. And I'll be honest, those, those guys deserve to be listed um, and I'm going to list them together at number four. Okay. Um, okay. And that's going to be Paris and Julius. Um, okay. They, they are both coaches at universities now. One of them coaches at Worcester University in Ohio. The other one coaches at uh, Worcester. Worcester. I have two cousins with, with Worcester. Dude, yeah. best cafeteria food yeah. in yeah, dude. college. Yeah. Hands down. Shout out to Worcester I don't College. Care. Been there. I'll fight everybody about it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, uh, Juju coaches at uh, Worcester and then, um, or Worcester if you really want to get mm -hmm. technical. Um, and uh, Paris teaches at a, a school in my hometown in Springfield, Ohio called Wittenberg University. Oh, yeah, I know Wittenberg. Yeah, yeah. They're, know Wittenberg. they're both track yeah. coaches there and. Um, you know, uh, they were my teammates. They were seniors when I was a freshman, but they really taught me a lot about what it meant to to be responsible, to be a part of a team, mm -hmm. um, and uh, how, to, how to push and motivate other people. Okay. Right? So um, so I look at, look at Keith as being, like, the first guy that really said, like, Justin, I believe in you because I see what you do, mm -hmm. and I, I want you to move. Um, and, I, and I really feel that. So I, like, Juju and Paris, I kind of I kind of – put in with Keith like that whole track okay you know um the uh, two more for me are my grandparents mm -hmm. uh my grand both my grandfathers are amazing men okay. um a lot of people out there in the Ohio Dayton area know my grandfather uh David Hooten LD okay um he owned an automotive and towing business for 50 years if you go and ask LD right now what his purpose on this earth was he will tell you God put me on this planet to work yeah, dude. Uh, there's yeah. nobody else in the planet that has a better work ethic than my grandfather. That's awesome. Um, and I got to see that firsthand. I actually went to work for him for a while because he was 72 years old, and he was jumping in and out of tow trucks. And I was like, Grandpa, you got somebody driving them tow trucks? He's like, no. I said, I'm going to drive them. I dropped down to part-time on my other job, and I actually went and worked for my grandfather for a while to drive the tow trucks. Um, okay. And I... growing up as a kid, I was always in the shop. That was my babysitter, right? Okay. Yeah, You're yeah, going yeah. to hang out with Grandpa. So, like, you know, I was learned a lot of skills from my grandfather as far as hard labor i never got to use the tire machine yeah no nah, bro i had to hand take all the tires off all the big trucks the did tow you, trucks did you do the uh, lighter fluid and uh oh no the match cool. the, that was yeah, that was even easier bro i had to use the freaking <laughs> crowbar and a hammer and my feet and I, I learned a lot from my grandfather about what it meant to to be a hard worker what it meant to contribute to society as an individual human mm -hmm. being, so I would say that's a lot that I learned from my grandfather. So you, you're going up the list, man. Go, go up the list. We're going to go back and forth, but go ahead and go. Go ahead. You're at number two now, yeah, right? Yeah, so uh, that would be my other grandfather, my dad's dad. Okay. He's uh, he's a pastor. Okay. Um, but, you know, I think looking at my grandfather and my grandmother, um, that's where I really learned how to be a man. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. I feel you, bro. Um, you know, other than, like, my mom, I would say that my grandfather um, – Harlan uh, was one of my biggest supporters in my life. Mm, that's awesome, dude. For everything. Yeah, dude. He's the one that's in the stands going, use your head, ding dong. Don't throw the ball away. You got two <laughs> open guys over there. Why are you driving to the rack? He's yeah. the one going, you know, use your brain, you know. Um, used to take me fishing, mm. teach me how to fish, gut fish. We okay. used to go walleye fishing, bass fishing. Mm-hmm. So that that was that grandpa, mm. you know. That was uh, that was the life skills, the, mm. the your faith. My faith, a lot of my faith came from my grandfather. Got you, dude. Um, so, mm. okay. Um, number one, dude, dad. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Most of all, my dad. Mm -hmm. Um, why? What did dad teach you that was so critical, dude? This is a deep one for me, and I'm gonna try not to get too emotional. 
And I was I, when I was it's okay, dude. It's when, all right, I was, dude. when I was thinking, it's our people. We're man, real as you get, though. Can't keep we're get, real as you get. Keep getting me get. crying on camera, bro. <laughs> Damn, man. <laughs> no, so I'll be honest. Uh, growing up, me and my dad didn't have a great relationship, and mm-hmm. it wasn't because we didn't want to have a relationship. My dad, my dad worked three to midnight. He worked hard. He was mm-hmm. a police officer. He made sure that you know our town mm-hmm. was safe. Right. Right. Um. But in being a police officer, I learned a lot of, you know, I learned a lot about right and wrong, and I learned a lot about, um, you know, my dad was very fortunate enough that he was able to teach me a lot about, uh, you know, how there are bad people in in that field of work and the yep. things that he did that made him not. So, like, for example, I remember there were Christmas Eves that my dad wouldn't be there. He wouldn't be home. Yeah. He'd be working. But he wouldn't just be working. He would go to, like... He would go get a Christmas tree and they would, him and his partner would donate a Christmas tree to a family that didn't have one. Maybe mm. it was somebody that they put in prison that mm. year. Or maybe it was somebody that got killed in a murder. Okay. You know, like those are the things I learned from my dad. Mm. Mm. Right. I learned, uh, you know, I learned a lot about how to take care of the farm. Like, yeah, you know, how to, yeah. how to fend for myself. Like I learned mm. that from my dad, how to, mm. that no matter what, you can always use your skills that you've learned from people yep and create new skills Mm -hmm. my dad can do anything man Mm -hmm. anything he Mm -hmm. can fix anything he can he can roof he can floor he can fix a pool i mean he he can do anything so i learned a lot of my critical thinking skills and how to solve problems and how Mm -hmm. to uh how to just think real different from your your work ethic's second to none dude there's no doubt about that. You, you kill it here at Zill Cigars, and everybody that meets you loves you. I mean, you're like the celebrity now. Like, <laughs> if they walk in, where's Justin at? Yeah, I know you, Bradley. Where's Justin? You know, that type thing. So, But outside the most important people in our life, we're here doing a cigar review, baby. This is we're, really good. We, we're, we're I'm, gonna, we're I'm gonna, slow on it right now because I, I was yakking. I'm, I'm looking at it, like, look at our ashes. Diff- look different than our ashes right here. This ash is holding on. It's a bundle stick. We're talking three bucks. Come on now. And you've relit it a couple times. Yeah, I have. So it means the burn. The burn's okay, but we're under a fan. Uh, I will say this: uh, sweet, spicy, a little bit of spicy, not much. No pepper, just some, some good baker spice. Uh, nutty, creamy. It does pair well with this desert rose. It really does. I'll tell you what: I get a sweet and sour. This is the, the cigar is sweet, and this is a little sour. I don't mind it at all, dude. Mm. This. Mm. This is all chocolate, man. Yeah? I'm really impressed with this. Okay. And it's okay. the only one I haven't had. And it's my favorite of the three. Really? I okay. liked I liked the Rosada. Yeah, yeah. But the man, Rosso? Rosso? The Rosa, Ro, yeah, Rosa. Rosa? Rosa. Rosa. Rosso? Rosso? I don't know what it's called. The Rosado. The Rosado. Yeah, I, I like it too. I really do like it. And I've had the other two. I, I had, I've been smoking this all week just getting prepped for the video and really have enjoyed it. So if you want some of the best bundle mm. sticks on the market today, you need to go click the link in the description below. Go to our website. Grab them because they're only in Toros. We have them only in Toros on our website because, in all honesty, that's what most people smoke. So we stocked them all in Toros. Got to mention a couple more things real quick before you go down your list. Okay, go for it. If I could put a six person on there, it would be you. Bro, don't, don't do that, bro. No, don't seriously. That. You get me all choked up, bro. Don't be doing that. It's important I mean, that you know that. Uh, all right. I get you, bro. If I knew, Brad, I got love for this dude, just if, so you know. I'm if I knew real. you longer than I've known you now, you would be in that top five. Bro, the, appreciate seriously, that. like. I appreciate that. The, even just listening to you talk about how you try to better yourself as a man, dude. I appreciate that, brother. I appreciate that. Makes me want to be ten times better. Yeah, dude. Well, I, yeah, dude. Like, I don't, I don't know what to say. I mean, it's an honor just to. In all honesty, you know, when you first came here, I had no idea first how close we were going to get, <laughs> and then second, like right. how great of a worker you were going to be, and then third, we're talking long long haul now. We're talking like, how does Justin run a store? What does what does he do? And as we expand Zeal Cigars and go to different places in the valley, you know, you expand and then expanding from your store and then going on and on and on. Um, we're very excited about that. So uh, you ain't seen the last of JB and Bradley for for a long time. It, it, the videos are probably few and far between as we expand, you know. But uh, we got some expansion. We got some good stuff coming up. Mm. But I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Thank I mean, you, honestly. It, thank you, man. It, appreciate that. You know, sincerely. And, that, um, just so you guys know. We didn't prep for this video. This is all. Yeah, yeah, he didn't send me anything. So (laughs) we have been. I mean, literally, we've been separated for the last almost a week, five days. You know, um, which doesn't uh, doesn't usually happen. You know, we're usually around each other a lot more. So, um, 
Yeah, it's been like last yeah. Thursday or Wednesday for real. Right, 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 right. Yeah, it's it's been it's been hard. So um, we're excited to be here uh, featuring these cigars, talking about the new air. Again, I gotta tell you, man, you want a, you want a good little refrigerator to keep your beer and wine in together. You gotta get this thing, man. You gotta get it, this thing is this is bomb.com. And you're going to have a discount code in the description below. Go down to the description below. Ooh. There'll be a discount code that you can click in. We like and, those. Uh, I know, right? Uh, that you can get in, and uh, it'll discount it. I don't know how much yet, but you can go down there and uh, check it out. So let me run through my list. Starting at number five. Starting at number five. There's a man named Harvey Plug. Uh, his son was my best man in my wedding, my best friend in high school. His name, name is Dan. Big shout out to Dan if you watch this. Um, Dan and I piled around junior and senior year, got real close. Uh, Dan was a star soccer player. And I was a football player and uh, just hung out and had a great time. So I had known Harvey for a very long time. And then uh, eventually uh, we both left staff at a ministry that we were both involved in. And they hired him literally to oversee me because I was such a, such a big loose cannon. So it was a larger church in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, and Harvey was one of the best bosses I've ever had. He taught me more about leadership, particularly conflict resolution. Mm. They used to call him the velvet brick, you know, at his forward for job. He had to, you <laughs> That's know, a name, He had bro. to let people go, but it was so nice the, the way he did it. Uh, and Harvey is... Uh, seriously, one of the men that I attribute to when things are really, really stressful and really, really tough and you're in the midst of conflict, not losing your cool. Yeah. And he taught me how to do that in a way that was uh, very, very good, very awesome. And I and Harvey was in my life for about four years uh, from uh, 2000 to about 2005, 2005, four to five years. So uh, and he's been in my life ever since. And, you know, and everything else. Like that. So I, I still so big shout out to Harvey Plug. Appreciate you, brother, and uh, love you to death. So the second one, second one, um, uh, Keith Kruger. Keith Kruger was my personal youth pastor from the time I was a sophomore all the way to the time I, I mean, and was a father figure, mentor, taught me more about loving people the right way. Mm. Uh, he's, a, he's a strong leader, uh, as well as a very ten, tender, tender giant. Looks like a leprechaun. I love that about him. He does. He's kind of a short, got red hair, Irish guy. I love, I, maybe he's German, I can't remember. Um, but Keith, Keith taught me what it meant to be Jesus to people. Mm. I mean, he was so cool, so awesome. He, was, he wasn't just a great speaker, but he genuinely cared. He always cared for me, always cared for uh, where I was. And I, I texted him last night. He texted me back right away and everything else like that. So I love you, Keith. Thank you so much for the influence of my life. Absolutely enjoyed it. And uh, I, and just so you know, Two every Keiths. everything, yeah, everything that you guys, everything that you've put into my life, dude, I remember in those formative years of my high school days. Trust me, if any of you guys are high school students and watch this, you can't buy cigars, but I'm glad you're watching. Um, the things that you, the choices you make in high school do echo into the rest of your life. And thank God I had guys in my life that helped me make the right choices and guided me to the right choices so that the choices down later on in my life weren't incredibly difficult. Uh, number three, Zeke Swift. Zeke Swift. Zeke is, uh, Zeke was a, uh, a prominent member of Procter & Gamble. And uh, Zeke would meet with me many Wednesdays in the mornings. And uh, Zeke would meet, meet with me from 7 a.m. to about 9 a.m. Wednesday morning for several years and taught me a lot about business and taught me more about Jesus. So I remember Zeke sitting down with me every Wednesday morning at Panera. I'd go get my coffee and he'd tell me this. He goes, let's talk about how life isn't about Bradley and the world doesn't sit around Bradley anymore. And I'm like, okay, that's a way to start out, right? <laughs> that's a way to start out. So uh, not only was he just a strong leader and this guy mentored many businessmen and many pastors in the Cincinnati area. Uh, I'm just privileged to be one of those people uh, that he mentored. And um, I, I contribute a lot of the good decisions I make in business to this day to my times with Zeke Swift. So Zeke, love you. Thank you so very much for the impact in my life. Number four, this has got to be one for the ages. So this is more recent in my life. And this is uh, a man who I served with in ministry he was the lead pastor at Desert Springs Bible Church until recently, and um, his name is Rick Eford. And Rick has got just, he, he's hes the dad that you want, he's the, the older brother that you need, and he's like, he can be the teenager that, that you can hang with all at the same time. Uh, he's really cool, I love him to death. Um, he's very, I mean, he, he's taught me theologically, taught me manhood. Uh, most of all, I remember I did an event one time. 
<laughs> if anybody remembers my time in youth ministry, remember this event. We did this thing called Beat the Jeep. Okay? Beat the Jeep. Somebody gave me an old Jeep Cherokee and I wanted to beat it up. And talked about how God can restore us from a beat down, you know, time in our lives. And I thought it was a great illustration. Uh, but there were some people that didn't like that illustration. They didn't like it. Um, and Rick stood in the gap for me, man. Rick was like, I'm sorry. I believe in our new youth pastor. I'm going to stand behind him. He stood up against so much opposition in that. He didn't need to. And I'll never forget that. I'll never forget the loyalty. I'll never forget the, the honesty, the integrity that Rick Eford has. And there, everybody has a Rick Eford story if you know Rick Eford. He's just that kind of guy. Uh, he's a local Phoenix guy here. I think he teaches at uh, Phoenix Seminary now. And uh, I love Rick. So Rick... All the time that you spent with me dealing with this stupid, dumb youth pastor, make all the kind of mistakes I ever did, I really do appreciate it. Thank you so very much for that time. Uh, it was not wasted, and it dramatically impacted my life. Number one. Pops. Number one. My, my dad. My dad. Uh, and this, ah, yeah, there we go. So, um, yeah. So, my dad... Um, some, some, you know, some dads are good early and kind of taper off later, and some guy, some dads are, uh, are are bad early and then bring it on later. And so, I think my dad, because of you know uh, his background in um, the Vietnam War and um, uh, just he, he's been a fighter all his life. Uh, early on in our childhood, it, it was rough. Yeah, he would tell you the same thing, um, and uh, he was just trying to provide for his family and everything else like that. But I tell you what, man, the last 25 years of my life uh, with my dad have been absolutely epic. I mean, just incredible. My dad is one of the most, I, I, I mean, I spent the first, you know, my teen years thinking my dad was an idiot, just like every teenager does probably, you know. Um, but my dad is one of the most smart, resourceful, intelligent um, leaders, drivers, uh, does the right thing at the right time for the right reason kind of guys. I would not be the kind of man uh, that I am today without my dad's influence, uh, without his belief in me. Best story about dad I can tell you was um, the one thing my dad taught me throughout my childhood and into my 20s that I'll never forget is he just loved my mom better than any other man I've ever seen love a woman. He just did. He just loved my mom well. He just did. So on the night of the night before my wedding, you know, I was super, super nervous. And I was just like, how am I going to like create a legacy like my dad? My dad's loved my mom. You know, they've had problems like any other marriage does. And that's the, the joy of marriage. You work through those things. And uh, he, I, I go to my dad and I'm like, uh, dad, um, I'm not sure what I'm doing. I mean, I'm getting married, and I'm not sure if I know how to, what, how to love Jamie right. I don't know. And he says, come here, boy. Come on. Come downstairs. And my dad um, had his uh, tool shop down in our basement. So he brings me down to our basement, and he pulls out a brand-new toolbox, and he puts it up on, on top. And he goes, I got you this toolbox just to get you started, you know, for the things you're going to need to fix your house up and everything else like that, which is just stuff like your hammer, nails, all that kind of stuff, whatever. Um, and then he goes, uh, but I've given you tools to use to love Jamie the way that I loved your mom, if you apply him. But you got to open the toolbox, boy. You know, my, my, my dad's favorite term for me was boy, okay? So ju just so you know, so no greater man has influenced my life other than my dad, in all honesty. So those are our top five guys. We'd love to hear from you. Who were the top guys in your life that influenced you? Maybe number one, number two. I don't know if we have time for all the five, you know, in there. But tell us why, too. I'd love to hear that in the comments from you. We love we love hearing this kind of stuff in the comments. But we're not just here to talk about our top five guys. We're here to talk about the top number one's bundle cigar, right? Dude. Number one bundle cigar? I'm really think? enjoying this. Dude, come on now. The creaminess with this and the milk and the chocolatiness mm -hmm. paired so freaking good with that PBR. I bet it did, dude. Oh, my that's goodness sweet, that's gracious. Sweet, yeah. That's very, very sweet. We've been talking about these Fratello bundle cigars. Now, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Three bucks, 325, worth it? Yes. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. 100% yeah. worth it. Uh, in my personal opinion, uh, better than most bundle cigars that are out there today. Yes. Uh, and these are very different than our branded cigars, our house brand cigars. Uh, I would say our house brand cigars are much better in my personal opinion. Um, and I, I know I'm biased, okay? But uh, the reality is, this is nothing. I mean, for three dollars, we're talking, you know, what fool's gold at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, better than fool's gold. Just be honest. Different. Well, yeah, yeah different. 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 Yeah, this, yeah, different. 
for a Maduro, this is something that I would say anybody could smoke and they could smoke any time of the day. Okay, okay. The Fool's Gold's like that too, but for me it's a little bit more of a bready, mm -hmm. French toasty kind of taste. And Absolutely. this is more of a like, like I would rather smoke this as a after dinner than the Fool's Gold. Right. Uh, I would say 100% on this risotto, uh, notes of, uh, of mm. like spicy baker's, baker spice, cream, nuts, leather. Uh, very, very good. White. Very, very good. Yeah, white ash on there, ash hung on there, plenty long. So you can tell these are really, really good cigars. And they come in a Connecticut, a risotto, and a Maduro. So we'll leave the link in the description so you guys can see it for yourself. Uh, and don't forget to click on the new wares. Uh, I'll, I'll leave a link for their refrigerator below so you guys can go look at it for yourselves i'm telling you what you got a man cave that's the fridge that's the fridge you don't want to pay like what you know 1200 1800 two thousand dollars for a fridge Get yourself a small little fridge like this keeps your wine maybe see whiskey you, you can keep whiskey cold I mean, I mean think about it i mean it goes up to like 50 degrees so uh -huh. like you could keep your whiskey kind of chill mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. done with that yeah no yeah. more cubes neat 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 so, well, that's it, guys. Thanks so much for watching us on the Zeal Cigar Review today. Make sure you click the links below for all the products that you saw in the video today. We'll catch you next time. We're out of here like last year. Peace.